Designed by um, Kerr and Company, and um, uh, who's a young Englishman living in Spain, and who's done a number of remarkably good uh, boats uh, in the last uh, few years. So this one is uh, 46 feet, and um, we we seem to be. Going with our uh, with, with 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 bigger boats than this, that we seem to be able to to beat not only on rating but on boat for boat. Hmm? We go to uh, Saint Malo. Um, uh, the race has existed for uh, more than a century, even before the. RRC uh, was started and it usually attracts uh, uh, a large number of, uh, of boats. In this case there are 176. So the course is um, starting on the uh, squadron line heading out west. You gotta leave the Needles Fairway marker to port and um, our routine has shown us carrying on on port tack, waiting for a little bit of the right hand shift, and then you go on starboard tack all the way across the channel. You gotta leave Guernsey to port, and by this stage the breeze should start lightening up, and then we head all the way down on a reach to the finish in Saint Malo. What's happened to the course? Well, <laughs> The committee has decided to go for the for the uh, alternative course, which is east about around the island, and which makes the the race somewhat longer. How much longer? Oh, 15 miles or something, or a bit more. Well, people. It's okay of about 110, 120 degrees true wind angle. We're just gonna go with full main number four jump. Okay, we, we'll probably have heaps of power with that anyway. Then it's a hard enough um, to go around Bembridge. Okay, if we have to reef going around there, it's gonna be at about a 60 degree true wind angle. Okay, and then uh, we hard enough onto the breeze to go around another mark and then probably tack over onto the port and go around the island. Okay. And then we'll have to see as the wind shifts. But anyway, so it's reach out, hardening up into attack, okay? Yeah? One ten. in front of you. Yeah. Okay, you just gotta leave that to start and then we should have enough water to just yeah, you know. follow the line of the smaller boats. Yeah? Medium air. How up. was it? It was uh, pretty heavy. <laughs> it's quite a powerful mate. Yeah. 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 yeah, as you can see, so it floats off pretty quickly. Uh, we might 
stick a reef in the main, but we got the right jib up, so we'll just have to see how we feel and what the wind does around the back of the island. Is. Half in three, two, on you now. Uh, yeah, the Vectran steering cable snapped off the uh, port wheel and uh, it snapped completely in half, not on the splice. The steering cable broke, uh, the Vectran part of it, yeah, the turning block uh, snapped. So we had to replace that and we got two wheels, so it wasn't too much of an issue. Um, it's all back in working order now. So. Good to go again. What was it like downstairs doing it? It wasn't very pleasant downstairs. Uh, it's a little bit of a violent motion at the back of the boat and quite uh, hot and stuffy, so that wasn't too pleasant. So what's for dinner, Carlo? Stew! Need a special stew! Why do you like this offshore racing, Lark? I'm, I'm not really too sure, John. Quite cold and tired, to be honest with you. Chose to be a bowman. Basically, uh, I don't really know to be honest. They sort of got thrown up there, being, uh, being uh, on another boat, being the youngest and the smallest. Uh, bowmen tend, tend to be the sort of uh, small guys that are easy to pull up masts and things like that. And uh, the youngest guys always get the worst jobs, or the jobs that the older guys don't want to do. They like to sit down the back here and keep dry and uh, yeah, back in business class. Bearing away, okay, start easing the sheet, start turning. Okay, nice and smooth, just keep it going, keep turning the boat, keep curling. Okay, trim.
Yeah, we just want to cover the, the other boat. Yeah, let's go now. Right, we've crossed the line.